Hello, my friends, and welcome. Welcome to worship. I am Fred Evenson, the senior minister here at Peacedale Congregational Church. We are an open and affirming congregation in the United Church of Christ, which means that no matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, no matter who you love or, or the, no matter the color of your skin, we welcome you. And we are so glad that you are joining us here today. All are truly welcome. As far as the announcements go, um, it is the first Sunday of the month, and so we will celebrate communion. I invite you to get some bread and juice or our like elements together as we break bread together. Youth Connect, our virtual Sunday school, is beginning next Sunday on September the 13th. We will meet at 9.30 a.m. this year, and the Zoom link will be emailed to the families every week. If you would like to be added to our email list, uh, you are certainly invited to contact the church office. Again, all are truly welcome. You could enjoy Sunday school in the comfort of your own home. Also, we are having another new members class by way of Zoom. So if you are interested in, in joining, just let us know. And uh, again, contact the office. But we are happy to have you join our faith family. No matter where you are, all the way across the country, you are invited to join our faith family. The question for today has to do with Labor Day. This is Labor Day weekend, after all. Who was the president? Who was the president who established Labor Day as a, a national holiday? And I'm going to give you three options. Was it A, President Grover Cleveland? Was it B, Abraham Lincoln? Or was it C, Theodore Roosevelt? How many think it was A, Grover Cleveland? You got it right. Grover Cleveland was actually the only president to serve two non-consecutive terms. He is considered to be both the 22nd and the 24th president. See, you're learning all kinds of things here in worship. On June 28, 1894, President Grover Cleveland signed a law making the first Monday in September of each year a national holiday. So I hope you enjoy your Labor Day. We continue our worship now with the song, Make Me a Servant. Servant, humble and 
gracious God, you are our strength and you are our host. We thank you, God, for inviting us to your table on this beautiful day. We are reminded that you are a God who frees the captives and that you, you fill us up with good things. You call us, God, to walk the path of faithfulness. And so we go. We go trusting your promise, your promise, a banquet, a feast for all of your children. And, and we imagine this, this freshly baked bread, hot from the oven, the sweet honey. We've also come to feast on your word this day, God, to rest in your presence. And so, God, we ask that you would be with us, that you would be with us now. We love you so much, God. It is in Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen. And now let's join our hearts and voices as we sing, Come to the Table.
table. Let's listen now for the word of God. Luke 14, 1. On one occasion when Jesus was going to the house of a leader of the Pharisees to eat a meal on the Sabbath, they were watching him closely. When he noticed how the guests chose the places of honor, he told them a parable. When you invite someone to a wedding banquet, down at the place of honor in case someone more distinguished than you has been invited by your host. And the host who invited both of you may come and say to you, give this person your place. And then in disgrace, you would start to take the lowest place. But when, you're, but when you're invited, go and sit down at the lowest place so that when your host comes, he may say to you, friend, move up higher. Then you will be honored in the presence of all who sit at the table with you. For all who exalt themselves will be humbled, and those who humble themselves will be exalted. He said also to the one who had invited him, when you give him a luncheon or a dinner, do not invite your friends or your brothers or your relatives or your rich neighbors in case they may invite you in return and you would be repaid. But when you give a banquet, invite the poor, the crippled, the lame, and the blind, and you will be blessed because you cannot repay you because they cannot repay you, for you will be repaid at the resurrection of the righteous. It's been said in Luke's gospel that Jesus is either going to a meal, at a meal, or he's coming from a meal. Often the Christian life is described as a, a journey, isn't it? But it could also be viewed as a party. Many stories end with this festive meal. As in the prodigal son story that's found in the very next chapter following today's reading. These meal stories, they lead somewhere. They lead to the Last Supper. And they culminate on the road to Emmaus where the risen Christ is recognized in the breaking of the bread. And we find Jesus today. He's at the table. He's teaching us a, a new set of table manners. He's teaching to the guests. He begins with a lesson on humility. Because those who exalt themselves will be humbled. Right? And those who humble themselves will be exalted. In another place, Jesus says, if you puff yourself up, then you will have the wind knocked out of you. But if you're content to simply be yourself, well, then your life will count for plenty. And then he instructs the host. He says, do not invite those who may help you in some way, shape, or form. No. Invite those on the margins, the poor, the crippled, the lame, the blind, and you will be blessed, for you will be repaid at the resurrection of the righteous. So God values the poor and the disabled differently than most societies generally do. God wants us to humble ourselves and, and remember the forgotten ones. Humility and hospitality, they, they appear linked. Are you humble? Are you proud of your humility? There is no real good answer to that, is there? Someone once said, humility is the ability to act ashamed when you tell people how wonderful you are. And of course, there is that song. Oh Lord, it's hard to be humble when you're perfect. And never, yeah, you know the song. What does it mean to be humble? Well, back to the, the story. We find ourselves eating dinner at a Pharisee's house. See, Jesus ate with the religious as well as the tax collectors and the sinners. He was inclusive in every sense of the word. And, and he notices people are jockeying about trying to get the best seats in the house. And at first this seems odd, but when we are honest about it, don't we all like to have the best seat? When you pull up to the grocery store or, or some business, don't you like to get the best parking spot? I served a church once where the 
the senior pastor had a, a special spot reserved close to the front door. It was marked with a sign, reserved for pastor. The servant to the servants had a reserved spot. One of those things that makes you go, hmm. I asked why the, why the reserved spot. The answer I got was, well, sometimes he has a lot to carry in. I imagine some of us may wonder, should I be trying to park as close as possible to my destination? Or should I, should I allow someone else the prime spot? Who, someone else who might not be as spry as I am. I realize this seems like a small thing. And one might say, well, who gets to be the line leader? Or, or where one parks in the parking lot, or where one sits at the dinner table, well, it's just now really that important. But as Plutarch once observed, that it is in the small, apparently trivial act that character is most accurately revealed. These smaller things, they add up. And in these things, Jesus invites us to assume a humble posture. One of the most humble things that I have seen was when a, a church member told me that he, he wanted a volunteer job, doing whatever it was that, that no one else wanted to do. What a, a humble and a, a servant attitude. Ultimately, it is a team effort, isn't it? We, we are all part of the body. I remember once a choir director who couldn't make it in, but they decided to go ahead, the choir did, and, and practice on their own. I took a certain humility. I noticed the one who offered to direct the choir kept saying, forgive me if I make mistakes, but just keep singing if I do. What a, a great attitude. Such teamwork is born of, of humility, a recognition that we all have different parts to sing, different roles to play, that, that we come from different stations in life, different places in the world, but that we all have one God who loves us all. This humble recognition gives birth to hospitality, which includes more than love towards people just like you or people just like me. It includes an invitation to all people, including the poor and the crippled and the lame and the blind, all people, even those who are excluded by Jesus' society, even those who are excluded by our society. When we realize that we are all guests at God's party, well, suddenly welcoming the visitors means welcoming sisters and brothers who have just as much right to be here as we do. You may have seen the news story this week on a, a former NASA astronaut, Leland Melvin uh, was his name. Here he is working at the International Space Station, the ISS. According to Ashley Strickland, who penned the story, he spoke on Monday during the virtual Humans to Mars Summit. And he was celebrating diversity and encouraging us all to think about what it means to be part of one human family. And according to Strickland, Melvin said his aha moment in space, it came unexpectedly. He anticipated it would happen as he helped install the European Space Agency's Columbus Laboratory on the ISS in 2008. But it wasn't until NASA astronaut Peggy Wilson invited Melvin over to the Russian segment of the station to share a meal. The crew included astronauts with Russian, French, German, African American, and Asian American backgrounds. And, and it was hosted by Whitson. Whitson was the first female commander of the space station. Melvin said, we were breaking bread at 17,500 miles an hour going around the planet every 90 minutes. And that was when my 
head exploded. I had this epiphany about our planet. And looking back at it, getting this thing that is called the, the orbital perspective. Did you know that was a thing? The orbital perspective. That's something astronauts gain as they gaze down on our planet as a whole. I think we as a civilization need to take that thing that we get in space as astronauts, he said. We know that if we don't work together as a team, and we were one of the most diverse teams in space, then we would perish. He says that's how we can survive on this planet. Return to the moon, eventually getting to Mars. He says it's perspective together, that we work together, that we live together, and we can change the universe together. Many of you know about the, the dinner table ministry. It's a free meal, a gift to our community, especially for those who need it the most. And with the onset of the pandemic, we had to pause the dinner. But I am pleased to say the conversation has now turned to rebooting that ministry with takeout meals. And as we invite all to the table, so to speak, it is an opportunity to serve folks that we wouldn't otherwise meet. To humble ourselves, realizing that it is all who fly the spaceship, who make the mission successful. Jesus lived a humble life. It is the way of Christ. The Apostle Paul's words from Philippians 2 spring to mind. And he writes, Do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit. Rather, in humility, value others above yourselves. Not looking to your own interests, but each of you to the interests of others. Paul invites us to have the mind of Christ, the heart of Christ. After all, it takes a humble heart to truly enjoy serving someone else. The good news is when we live this way, remembering the forgotten, those we might call other, then we, when we invite them to our tables, recognizing that we are one human family, then the party begins. The risen Christ is recognized in the breaking of the bread and tells us, you will be blessed. Such is the feast of the kingdom of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. And now let's continue our worship by singing, Come to the Table. To the hero and the coward, to the prisoner and the soldier, to the young and to the older, all who hunger, all who thirst, all the last and all the first, all the paupers and the princes, all who fail, you've been forgiven.
We remember on the night of the betrayal, and Jesus was at the table with his disciples, and he transformed his table fellowship ministry into a gift, a sacrament for all time. As he took the bread, and he blessed it, and he broke it, and he said, this is my body, which is broken for you. Take and eat. Do this in remembrance of me. And in the same way, after supper, Jesus took the cup. And after giving God thanks, he gave it to them. And he said, take and drink. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many. Because of the sin of violence, take this cup of grace and forgiveness, and every time you drink of it, do so in remembrance of me. Let's continue to listen now for the voice of God as we enter into a spirit of prayer. Let's pray. Gracious and merciful God who hears all of our prayers, who mourns with us in our grief, and who celebrates new life with us, who dances with us to the song of life, and who moves us by the rhythm of Christ's humble love. We thank you, God, for teaching us your your kingdom table manners. God, as we gain perspective, we grow to learn how much we don't know, how much we need each other, and how much we need you. Help us to find ways to invite the other into our spheres of influence whether it be our Zoom meetings or otherwise, help us, God, help us to see with eyes of humility through the spectacles of, of mercy and grace to judge less and, and to love more. God, we thank you for reaching out to us through Christ who came to teach us the importance the importance of welcoming all, everyone, to your table of love and forgiving grace. God, we ask that you would bless this bread, bless this wine, bless it with your spirit, God, that our will might be in tune with yours. May these gifts be for us new love, and new life, and new joy. And hear us now, God, as we, we pray the prayer that Jesus taught us to say. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Take and eat. It is the bread of heaven broken for you. Take and drink the cup of love poured out for you. The peace of Christ be with you. Amen. As we consider the gift of communion,
with our God and, and with each other and all the blessings that God has offered us. Let us respond accordingly and joyfully with our offering to God, whether it be your time and your talents or, or financially, you could give to the ministries of this church. Here are some ways for you to do that very thing. Giving is a great way for us to, to help serve those who are most in need in our community. May God abundantly bless both our giving and our receiving. And now as you go forth, nourished at the Lord's table, may God's blessings wash over you as you live humbly and hospitably into the weeks ahead. Amen.